Hey, let's uh, let's do some top secret. Well, top secret. There's four of us. Um, that's the secret. That's the secret. Okay, so this started like this, and then it got to this, and then it got to this, and then there was a video. But what what, what were you working on here? I'm working on a WLED. You know, it's funny. I like I before we went on, we had to take a trip. I thought I ordered the PCBs, and then I like realized when we got back, they like never checked out. Oh, but then you get to do the revisions. I know. Oh. Well, I, I did. I did now. So it'll come. It's okay. a week late. Um, so I should have had it this week, but I'll have it next week. Um, this is my WLED driver board. It's like it's a compact all-in-one board for an ESP32 to drive WLED yeah. NeoPixels. And we do have a video, but I wanted to show the evolution of this. And thank you everyone for the Yeah, feedback. I started with like the early one yeah. and I was like, ask for ideas and people sent me some good ideas and I they integrated did. them. Okay, so let's uh, watch the video. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, so one of the things that our resident unicorn fairy mermaid Erin has been doing is a lot of projects with WLED. She really loves it. It's really easy to set up and use, and it has animations. And so she did this um, holiday garland uh, project, and she's done a lot, a lot of projects with WLED. Um, but one thing that she said is like, it's really annoying to use our feathers and wire them up because there's all this like power splitting and like sometimes you need level shifting. She said, can you make a WLED board that's like really good? Uh, and so I'm like, okay, let's try. So this is my attempt to make a WLED board. That's not necessarily like wearable, but it, like you could have it be portable. So it's not like it's a gigantic thing. And one thing that I thought would be cool is if you could use uh, USB Type C, so you could use like laptop batteries or like you know things to charge iPads and stuff, because it'll give you five, twelve, or twenty volts. It'll give you a lot of current. So you could use USB PD. So this is a USB power delivery client chip that'll let you select which voltage you want. Um, so you could use it with 12 volt or 24 volt pixels. 20 volts is a little bit lower than 24, but I found that 24 volt pixels are, are fine at 20. You could also use uh, USB DC, 2.1 millimeter, if you, you want like an outlet or like a, a AA battery pack. And you know, reset and like an input button and then a USB, sorry, ESP32 with a USB serial converter. So, you know, WLED supports like the C3 and C6 and stuff, but um, I found that like the ESP32 Classic is is the best supported. Uh, Stem IQT for I2C if you want to add like OLEDs or sensors, um, an analog or digital input. I'm thinking about adding this I2S microphone right on board so you can do um, audio reactivity. And I thought what would be really fun is have terminal blocks, and this is a nine pin terminal block because we have three signals, so you can have like really big you know, animation streams. Um, and each one has its own power and ground. So it's a really easy to wire this up for three different strands. Like you can wire them directly. You don't even have to share a terminal block. And then I have to do the diode or for the power. That's kind of annoying because this should be able to handle up to five amps at like 24 volts. It's kind of a lot. And I think that's it. Maybe I have to also do like um, some power supply stuff. So I'm looking at some chips. This is a, I need a 3.3 volt uh, power supply. So this is a step down converter that's fairly low cost and I don't need more than um, half an amp to be honest uh, for all this because um, well I don't know I'll check the ESP32 but I think it's happy with 500 milliamps. I've run it off of 500 milliamps before and then um, this is the diode or controller so I'll need two of these and two end channel FETs to make the hot swap power because I think That'd be useful. You could use either USB or DC. Anyways, I'm working on it. And if you have any suggestions or ideas, let me know. I've never designed anything for WLED before. This is my, my first attempt. Cool. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, so we are waiting to finish brining the turkey. We're going to yeah. baste it and cook it. Uh, it's mm -hmm. early morning here, Thanksgiving. Um, and I'm also testing out these Nuxi boards. So these are boards I designed um, that will let you have vertical displays. This is a... 1.14 inch 240 by 135 IPS TFT display. But what's cool is it's um, just like vertical and there's two of them stacked side by side. So you can have as many as you want. Each one ha will have their own chipset line. In this case, I just wired them together to, to quickly test them. Um, but then you could have like six in a row and have like a cute like flip dot, like flip dot or flip display. Yeah, I kind of. About. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Those are the things that they used to have at train stations. Yeah. Or Nixies or whatever. I just thought this was kind of cute, and there's like little mounting tabs, but you can remove these. I don't think I can do it with my hand. I need pliers, but yeah. you can. Snap. They're snap off. 
So if you want really slim, and then I used um, dual header here. So these are actually the same connections. There's like seven connections, but they're like, sorry, two by seven, but the sevens are just doubled up so that like mechanically you can plug it into a breadboard or perf board. And like, you know, they, they tilt a little bit, but they're, if you solder them down, they would be like nice and straight. So cool. yeah, this test pass. This looks good just to make a little tweak for this cutout and they're good to go. All right, and uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we have a new OnlyFans thing. Um, you know, I I think that it's going to take off. We'll see if people are going to want to subscribe, but uh, Lady Ada is going to talk about it. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Well, I wanted people to know that I'm expanding beyond just doing Adafruit, and <laughs> I've opened up an OnlyFans account, <laughs> and I'm going to be selling OnlyFans. Yeah. Five volt, one watt fans. Yeah. These are very sexy. Um, <laughs> all sorts of sizes. Knowing Pedro asked me to stock some fans because they want to do some projects with like venting air around and air cooling. And I was like, oh, yeah, like what I like about these is they have USB. Um, connectors so I can like easily test them just by plugging them in and nice and breezy and they also come with these um fan covers I mean I have to find the one that matches this one but like maybe this one is the one yeah so this like it covers it and so you it protects your fingers or components or wires or whatever from getting sucked in so I like that they also have these um optional fan protectors so yeah trying out these fans they come from like a very cute i think this is like you know one and a quarter inches or something up to like nine centimeters ten centimeters so uh, a wide range of fans for okay. my fans all right so Big get fan. your fans at only fans at ai adafruit industries that's right we always knew it was going to be a big year for AI for OnlyFans. <laughs> okay. Also, check out. We have our right, holiday gift okay. guide going on right now. 15% yeah. off. Check that out. Cool. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay. You have this really good camera, which is excellent yeah. because I'm showing off something that's really hard to tell. Yeah. There's two stacking headers. And the one on the left, this one is a little bit thinner than the one on the right, which you could kind of see. If you measure it with your calipers, it's, of course, going to be very easy to tell the difference. This one is about 0.4 millimeters thick. And this one is 0.6-ish millimeters thick. And the pins themselves are about 0.6 millimeters, 0.65 millimeters wide. So these are two stacking headers. And we um, sell stacking headers so people can, you know, plug them into shields that then go into an Arduino, into a bonnet. Um, we have the 2 by 2 and the one by 8s And, you know, basically enough to match up here. And then we sell them as a kit in the store. Um, and historically, I've always sold ones that were um, like the ones that I showed originally, this kind of thinner uh, 0.4 millimeter by 0.6 millimeter. Um, but I had some requests for the square pin type. And so I've actually gotten some samples and they're quite nice, actually. They fit very nice. They're very solid. They're not uh, hard to insert and they're not hard to remove. They're a little bit thicker, um, but people say that'll make better uh, contact with solderless breadboards and like, you know, loose headers on um, some Arduino compatibles and feathers and stuff. So I'm going to finish testing these. And then what will happen is next time I have to book that stacking header kit, I'm going to get um, the version that has these square pins on them uh, with the gold flashing. It's quite nice. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? This is Lady Ada's floor. Um, so I'm trying to reorganize my office a little bit because I have a little bit more space now. And um, I have like, a lot of small things. So for example, like all these components that I've historically put in these little trays that then I use when I'm working at my desk over here, um, I'll pick up like a tray and I'll, I'll, I'll pick, uh, pick and place all the components manually. And um, I had these stacked all over the place. And so I picked up this Ikea Alex um, shelving system and what i like about this is it has really thin drawers because i have a lot of like kind of thin things so i'm going to get like more of these and maybe sort of like make a big array of them um it's for storing little dev boards and then um my prototypes that i'm working on stuff that's you know like in progress um or like you know stencils like this is like my my latest stencils and pcb kit um, that I will put together on the desk. And then um, what I've done 
historically have used these um, like totes and they're double-sided totes and they have a little latch and then they have little cups inside and you can fit boards inside. So this is like my ESP32 one. And I had them on a shelf, but the problem is, is that um, they were kind of like unsightly and a little annoying. So what I want to do is actually long-term just have this all have the cups and trays in it. But for now, I'm just using this to store the bins. And what's nice is that like, you know, this is my feather one, this is my ink one. These actually fit to a piece and like exactly into the, um, the drawer. Did you know that issue. before you no, bought it? No, I didn't. I mean, oh. I kind of guessed. Risky. That, well, because I don't, this is just for temporary. What I yeah. really want to do is like, again, I'm going to like 3D print or cut or laser, whatever, something, some internal grid. So it'll be more like this, where when I open it, I can see every feather I own and like every feather wing and every cutie pie board. So um, I don't cool. know. If people have ideas for how to use these yeah. storage systems, let me know. I'm just like figuring it out. Maybe we'll do, um, that's that's a bell for me to stop this. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll do something like we are doing for our Advent Day calendar. We can do like people's workspaces that they want to share. Ooh, that'd be cool. Maybe, around, right. maybe around the world. Yeah, I'm just trying to be a little more organized okay. the coming year. Cool. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? I'm testing out some NeoPixels. Um, I've got these like stars and dots and hearts and everything. And this just looks like your standard rainbow swirl on NeoPixels. But what's very interesting is that this is running from a Raspberry Pi 5. And if you're me, you might, like an hour ago, you might be like, hey, you can't do NeoPixel on Raspberry Pi 5 because the BitBank code that was written for the Raspberry Pi, you know, 1, 2, 3, and 4 doesn't run on the new RP1 chip uh, because we don't have access to the PIO library and the BitBanking isn't fast enough. And, we do blah, 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 blah. and then it turns out that actually just like a few days ago, um, Raspberry Pi released PIO Lib, which is a utility for... Um, the Raspberry Pi computers that lets you write code for the RP1 chip on the Raspberry Pi 5 and Pi 500 that lets you do like fast PIO driven IL. And then when I saw this, I was like, oh my goodness, Jepler, could you like go and basically make it so we can do NeoPixels on the Raspberry Pi 5? And he's like, yeah, I think I know what to do. So he took their example code and made a binding for Python that provides NeoPixel write. And this is like the function that we use in Blinka and CircuitPython to like, you know, you have a buffer of bytes and you like just want to NeoPixel it out. And after he wrote this and by compiling, you know, and, and, and pip installing it, um, you can now use, well, right now it says NeoPixel write Py5 because we're kind of like hand testing it. But eventually this will be built into Blinka where you'll just be able to do NeoPixel writing and the um, PIO part, the uh, the NeoPixel part will be done by PIO behind the scenes. You won't have a lot of dependencies. It'll be like built into the Blinka library. So basically what I'm saying is very soon we're going to have native support for NeoPixel writing on any pin on the Raspberry Pi 5 with Python and Blinka. That's a big deal. Very exciting.